Hi, hi, and welcome to my Saturday stream and scream of Danganronpa. Yeah, Mondo. Welcome to Say So. I'm happy to admit I made a mistake, but... Son of a bitch! What's wrong, bro? C come on! Tell him he's wrong! You are wrong! You have to be wrong! Aww. Everything you just said is wrong! You made it all up! Okay, then why don't we look back on this case one more time, from the beginning? Why don't we just make him that show his he book? Uh, his his he book. And we'll all see if I was right. Or oh wrong. god, not DDR mode, please. Uh. Closing argument. Oh crap. Okay, so Tito goes in there, grabs some shit. Celeste sees him. Celeste is all like, you know, your shit sticking out. And she's like, oh, really? Okay, uh, well, I gotta go. <laughs> so then... Hmm. Hold on. How do I scroll through these again? Ah, oh, there we go. Oi. Um, okay, so... These gaps are gigantic. Alright, so gonna have to use I'm trying to figure out if this is when they're pulling out Alright, maybe it'd be better if I just come back to this section. Or maybe work backwards. <laughs> oh god damn, this is a long one! Uh. Okay, this is gonna take for fucking ever. Alright, they wrote up the thing. No idea why Boyakia would do all this shit, but still makes no sense to me, but yeah. Okay, he comes in with the thing, ties him up. Unless there's another section of tying. Okay. Um. This is, I'm guessing, when they pick it up. Ah, this one's like super complicated. They rolled up the carpet. Saw the poster. God, what the fuck is this? Like, there's so many fucking options. No, they took the poster down, went into the next room, hung the poster back up. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's right. Um. <laughs> uh. Oh! I didn't know there were, like, hints in here. Okay, okay, let me go back then. I didn't realize there were hints. Hold on. Okay. There's something everyone has that you need to get into the locker rooms. Which locker room did they go into? Not the girls, but the boys. Where's the boys on this list? There we go. The weapon the killer used was... Yeah, okay, so I did have that one right. 
Hello, Mimi. And the murder took place and blood spattered on something, didn't it? Yup. Okay. Drop the murder weapon. To disguise truth, can we switch around the carpet as well as something else? Okay, so yeah. I did have that right. Which locker room the killer moved to? Killer took something from the other locker room and switched it at the scene of the crime. Okay, so that was right. What was it that brought along to the murder scene? There we go. When, what he used to disguise, what happened? When Bayokyo arrived at the machine, what did he use to disguise what happened? Yeah, I'm assuming they mean the bloodlust thing. I'm not sure, though. Where did the killer go after they were done? To the sauna. When the hamburger was in the sauna room, what happened to it? Let's see, that's right. I think that's sure right. Is you. First, let's take a look back to before the incident. Seriously, I still don't understand what the fuck's wrong with Bayakuya. Celeste saw Chihiro in the warehouse, correct? Since he's not the murderer, I have no idea what he gains by making the murder scene look like a murder. That wasn't committed by that murderer. I don't understand him! It doesn't make any logic to me! At the time, she was apparently stuffing something into a duffel bag. That something was a blue tracksuit. You can confirm this, right, Celeste? <laughs> like that little wave. With bag in hand, Chihiro headed out, even though it was officially nighttime. She made her way to the locker room, specifically the boys' locker room. But how could the victim, who was apparently a girl, access the boys' locker room? Easily? Simple. Because she was really a he. Which is why he was able to use his own handbook to gain entrance to the boys' locker room. Once inside, he met with someone there. And the person he met was the one who killed him. It seems likely that the killer grabbed a nearby dumbbell, approached the unsuspecting Chihiro, But why? I don't understand the motive. And that's where the blood stains on the poster and carpeting in the boys' locker room came from. See, I thought it was Taka for a super, super long time until I kept catching little words that Mondo was saying. Because to me, it seems like Taka is the one that would possibly kill over something like, you know, he being a she or something like that. Because he was talking about how much... How angry it makes him when people disrespect the school uniforms and Chihiro's wearing a girl uniform. And I thought maybe he would take it as some kind of like affront or personal insult. <sighs> it was likely in the heat of the moment. The body was arranged, but the murder itself felt unplanned. I agree with that, absolutely. Which is why the killer hurried to try and hide the act. First, pulling up the bloodstained carpet. Then, removing the bloody poster. And finally carrying the corpse into the girl's locker room. A girl's handbook was necessary to get into the locker room, of course. But this alone doesn't prove that the killer was necessarily a girl. After all, Sayaka and Junko's handbooks have been placed in the main hall. Using one of those, a boy could get into the girls' locker room without much problem. And that's exactly how the killer did it. With the carpet and the poster they brought with them, they got to work. 
they change the layout of the boys and girls locker room in what you might call a crime scene switch. That could have been the end of things, but no. Yakuya discovered the body and decided to intervene in the situation, making things even more complicated. Why though? I still don't understand it. Oh, well, can't someone explain to me so, why? Maybe someone who already knows the about the game. When this goes on YouTube, please feel free to tell me why he did this in the comments below because I don't understand it. I'm racking my and brain and I just can't figure it out. He used the cord to string up Chihiro's lifeless body. Then, using the victim's own blood, he left a grisly message there at the scene of the crime. I know you're saying to expose Genocide Jill and to prove how smart he was, but it doesn't make sense. His life is incredibly important to him. If he had gone and actually... Okay. He made the assumption by doing this that neither he nor Genocide Jill would be accused as the, the blackened one. Which doesn't seem like a very safe assumption at all. Because he would immediately assume that everyone else is dumber than he is and would fall for that. So all he did was risk his own life in order to expose Genocide Jill and he already knew who Genocide Jill was. So he literally could have just told everybody Genocide Jill, you know, Toko told me that they're Genocide Jill. Or done something else to trigger her revealing that she is Genocide Jill. He didn't need to go through all this to show it. All he did here was possibly kill himself. He wanted to create the illusion that Genocide Jack was responsible for the slaughter. And around the same time that Byakuya was putting together this facade, the killer having already disposed of Chihiro's bag and other belongings, arrived at the sauna. There, they planned to destroy the last piece of evidence, Chihiro's handbook. And just as the killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough to ruin the electronic gadget. But why? Why destroy Chihiro's handbook unless it was to protect the secret maybe because everybody knows who the victim is as the person that doesn't show up and where the body is found somehow the killer knew that the handbook couldn't stand up to the heat of the sauna and the reason they knew that is because the sauna had already wrecked their own handbook and that's how it all played out but why isn't that right mondo Arata? element has been added to bullet time battles. Sure. Fever time and nega time. During a bullet time battle, if you press the spa- God! I don't know what key the space key is, game! Why did you suddenly switch? Uh, why did the controls suddenly no. switch? Uh, fever time will activate and the tempo will be forced to its max. At this point, even if you push the buttons at random, you won't miss. You can just push right, left, right, left, however you want to destroy the verbal assault. Only lasts till your focus gauge runs out, so make the best possible use of your time. Uh, of course, it wouldn't be fair if only you got access. So we've also prepared something called Nega Time, which your opponent can use. If the opponent activates Nega Time, your tempo marker will disappear, making it quite a bit tougher to hit the buttons in rhythm. Oh, great! 
If you were to activate fever time at this point, no, never mind. I'm sure nothing would happen. I don't know what I was worried about. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, if your action difficulty is set to gentle, the opponent won't use negative time. Good luck, have fun. Uh, I don't. Wait, why am I having to fight Taka? Huh? Show me some evidence. You're wrong. I won't listen. I refute you. False. I hate this. I hate Show this. I hate this so much. I refuse to fault you. Show me some evidence. You're wrong. I won't listen. I refuse. You're corrupt. Show me some evidence. I won't listen. I refuse to vote. Show me some evidence. Am I like doing this at all? This is, feels like it's taking forever. I failed it. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea what's fucking going on. <laughs> well, I guess I fail. What? <laughs> Is this really the end for all of us? Uh. All right, I guess we're switching to control to mouse and keyboard. I don't. There's no mouse on here. I. <laughs> no, I don't want to hear it. The mouse doesn't work. I don't fucking. I don't fucking understand at all. Whatever, fine. Show me some I don't know how the fuck I'm doing this. I won't listen. I refute you. I don't. <sighs> Show me some evidence. I won't listen. False. Okay, I have to go back and forth. Okay. Fuck it. Show me some evidence. Listen, false. You're corrupt. I refuse to vote. I'm gonna. Oh, to actually Show make it. I should prove it. <laughs> My thinking so far is right. I don't fucking. All right. <laughs> Switch back to controller now. Mondo must have replaced his broken handbook with Leon's. In which case, we can just check each of our handbooks right now. Once we do that, we'll... We don't gotta do that. Huh? Is he gonna yeah. confess? Yeah. Aww. I can hear it in his voice actor. I did it. I killed him. Hey, 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 hey. See. <laughs> oh, the fucking rhythm thing, man. The fucking rhythm. Oh, I hate that rhythm one. Bro, what are you saying? I got no choice, man. After hearing all that, I gotta just. Yeah, Give Mondo up. was one of my favorites too. Go ahead, Monokuma. Get it over with. Ask for the goddamn verdict. Roger that. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Aww. No waiting, no holding on. Time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Grab your lever and give it a yank. Who will you elect as the blackened this time? All right, around? so let me see what kind of execution would be fitting for him. The only thing I could think of, because he's big on motorcycles, would be either being ran over repeatedly by a motorcycle, or tied to like multiple motorcycles that then, from the center, 
drive outwards and tear him limb from limb. Will you make the right one of those or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Oh. Yeah, I I think he'd be quartered by motorcycles. Yes, it is so. The black and the Kilchihiro Fujisaki was Mundo Owada. Well, la uh, the thing is, Xantax, Xanatax, Xantax, Xanatax is last time in my uh, moment, I guessed it. I guessed exactly how he was going to be killed. So I'm just trying to guess it again this time. In case you're wondering, the vote was not unanimous. Kiyotaka chose the wrong answer. You're treading very close to the danger zone, Mr. Ishimaru. You need to be more careful. I refuse... I refuse to believe it. I forgot what his voice was. There's no way, no way he would kill someone. Sorry. Aww. What is this? Why are you apologizing? Why? I'm not repeating why that many times. <laughs> I would like to know that too. Now then. Well, it looks like Mondo's taken a vow of silence, so allow me to explain on his behalf. Actually, the story of murder this time is the sad story of two men. <gasps> oh, but for anyone who doesn't really want to hear it, you can hit the control key to fast forward the text. <laughs> oh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> anyway, there once was a young boy, and his name was Chihiro Fujisaki. He had an extreme inferiority complex regarding his own lack of strength. You are so weak even though you're a boy. He'd heard things like this as long as he could remember and he couldn't overcome his weakness. On the contrary, he tried to hide and buried himself further and further into that weakness to take on the fragile form of a petite young girl. He had chosen that as his way out. Um, now no one will be able to say anything about even though you're a boy. But no matter how tightly he wrapped himself up in that shell, the inferiority complex had already taken deep root inside of him and was not so easily weeded out. As it turned out, the shell was completely empty. The complex didn't disappear. Instead, it only grew stronger and stronger. I'm weak. Weak, 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 weak. Once the killing game had begun here at school, he had no choice but to accept this fact. After all, this world is survival of the fittest. If you're not strong, you don't survive. And then the lovely and hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secret, which of course included Chihiro's embarrassing secret, which I was more than willing to divulge. Even though he dresses like a girl, Chihiro is actually a boy. Hey, um... And that was something that Chihiro couldn't let anyone find out, no matter the cost. If that was revealed, it would be the end. The hardened shell would crack, the armor would fall away. Without a doubt, those around him would torture him more than ever before. Everyone figured being thrust into such a dilemma must have sent him spiraling into despair. And yet... Uh, I'm sorry. I don't really want to talk about it right now. But... I also don't want to leave things the way they are, so... Maybe I can talk about it later? After I try my best to become strong, then I can tell everyone. 
Annoyingly, he used the threat of discovery to motivate himself to become stronger. That's right. I want to change. I'm going to get stronger. Accept who I am. Strong enough so that when someone says, even though you're a boy, it'll be okay. I'll be okay. I'll get better. With that thought at the front of his mind, he resolved to take immediate action. And so, that day he made the commitment to begin exercising. He was prepared to retrain his mind and body. But sadly, that would be the first and only chance he would get at it. Hey, um... When he decided to start exercising, he thought it would be good to ask for someone's help. But he wanted to tell that person his secret first, and then ask them to help him from there. And the person he went yeah, to... that's right. It was me. I can't... I can't do Mondo at all. So I guess it's a good thing he's dying in that sense. It sure was! <laughs> the biker gang fella had been painfully clear about how important his manly promises were. So Chihiro probably figured that even if he can find it in Mondo, his honor would make him keep the secret. Uh huh. Plus, Mr. Macho Mondo was the very symbol of a strong man that Chihiro had always aspired to. Maybe talking to Mondo about it will help give me some cur- Whoops, totally the wrong voice. Maybe talking to Mondo about it will help give me some courage. So he went and asked Mondo to help him become strong. <clears throat> that was his aspiration. And he thought that only with Mondo's support would he ever be able to come close to that. Correct. So then, that must be why Mondo did what he did, to keep the promise he made to Chihiro. Huh? What did he do? Oh, you mean that's why Mondo carried Chihiro to the boys' locker room and to the girls' locker room? Indeed. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Um, wasn't that to cover up what he'd done? Certainly. That could have been part of it, but I don't think it was the main reason. The real purpose was to keep the promise between men he'd made to Chihiro. But... How does moving the body keep his secret? Because... Because if everyone known he'd been killed in the boys' locker room, then everyone would have been arguing about how she got into the boys' locker room, right? Once that started up, at least a few of us would have immediately begun to suspect his identity. So he tried to protect Chihiro's secret by putting him in the girls' locker room and stealing his handbook, see? Then Mondo did all that to keep the promise he'd made to Chihiro, whom he'd also killed? Yeah. Aww. <sighs> Why? Why would he do that? The more I hear you talk, the more I don't understand! I know, right? <laughs> I mean, you guys trusted each other, right? So why did you... Yeah. Because no matter what, I didn't want anyone to know. I, I can't, Mondo. So that's what triggered it after all. Da -da -da -da! <laughs> the possibility of having your embarrassing moments and secrets exposed. What? What is this? Nothing could have been that bad. I have no idea what voice I'm doing there, sorry. Something he didn't want anyone to know, even if it meant killing someone? You're wrong! It's impossible! Don't make me repeat myself. How many times must I repeat myself? To judge others by your own standard is the height of folly. Even if you can't comprehend it, he obviously can. That's all there is to it. Alright, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Give me that thumbs up if you did. And subscribe if you want more content. Thanks again, guys. Alright. Bye, bye, bye! As I stretch out my hand to pick it up, almost as if on its own, my hand froze. When do they have time to take that?